On this episode of Locked On Grizzlies, it is a wild and wonderful Wednesday edition of the show. DeMichael Cole is back, and he will be talking more Grizzly injury update news. Hate to be a Grinch, which is where I was going with that, but I'm not a huge fan of the Grizzlies health staff at this moment. Then from there, DeMichael has a great piece on the commercial appeal talking about NBA draft lottery simulation stuff. Lots of good content there, and we'll preview Grizzlies Philly tonight. Stay locked in with us. It's Locked On Grizzlies. Let's go. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is a wild and wonderful Wednesday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. Thank you so much for being with us wherever you're checking out the show. Apple, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, whatever the case might be. We appreciate you being with us on this Wednesday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. I am one of your hosts, Joe Mullinax, joined by my co-host of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee, Mr. DeMichael Cole. Uh, good to have you back with me here, partner. Been going not solo. I had Parker Fleming, one of our mutual friends, on the show yesterday. Uh, but good to have you back as always, partner. Looking forward to talking uh, the, the sunshiny rainbow existence that is the Memphis Grizzlies injury report here with you shortly. Again, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts as proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. Check us out on YouTube. Continue to make Locked On Grizzlies a part of your NBA content consumption. Today, we're going to talk about. To Michael's awesome piece over the commercial appeal, taking a look at the Grizzlies lottery possibilities, obviously tons of content that we can dive into as the season ends. It's going to be a long stretch between the start of the playoffs and the NBA draft. So we'll, we'll, we've got lots to talk about there, but we'll start that conversation or progress slowly. We'll also preview Grizzlies 76ers tonight, but first to Michael, you know, the Grizzlies came out with more injury information Again, you as the beat writer for the organization on uh, the Commercial Appeal, you know a lot more about this kind of stuff than me, so I'll let you kind of take it away. Two members of the Grizzlies uh, that are going to be missing a larger amount of time than perhaps we thought. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I, I don't know. At this point, I don't know what to think. You know, when guys get hurt, mm -hmm. I just you, you just wait and see uh, what comes next. But, uh, yeah, you mentioned it basically. Zaire Williams, uh, I think it's a hip flexor strain. And lower back injury for him. And he'll be reevaluated in four weeks. Derrick Rose still dealing uh, with the growing injury uh, on his part. And he'll be reevaluated in three weeks. Now, this is important to point out from the standpoint of there are about five weeks left in the Grizzlies season. So uh, Zaire Williams in particular, who is the one I think we all can agree of the, of the two that needs to play the most yeah. uh, in these games. Absolutely. It, he will be reevaluated in four weeks, which means he'll be reevaluated with one week left or a little more than a week left in the season and probably two or three uh, games. Uh, so that's this, I think, of the two players. And, and Joe, I, I think you, it's safe to say that you agree. It's it's more meaningful uh, from a timeline perspective uh, in the case of Zaire Williams <clears throat> because looking at his case and, and – I think it's it's this was a time frame where we've talked about how this is kind of a trial or an opportunity uh, for certain players. And he was one of the main uh, pieces for that. And now I think as we go into offseason, there's still going to be a lot of questions uh, that need to be answered on the part of Zaya Williams. And it's a big offseason for him. And we'll see how the Grizzlies address that situation in, in, in totality. Massive for him in terms of his ability to be here long term because Parker talked about this on yesterday's show. Yeah, yeah. You know, Zaire is about to double his salary essentially, right? I think he yeah. goes from like three million or so to six, six million, mm -hmm. and that sounds like oh, that you know, that's in the NBA. You know, you've got guys making a lot more than that. That's a lot of money for a team that's going to continue to be up against the luxury tax. You got to deal more on the margins in that kind of situation. And Zaire not being able to show consistently what he's capable of within the scheme of the Grizzlies, that's significant. The Derrick Rose injury doesn't matter as much. And we can talk more about this again as the season concludes, kind of review the season. I guess you could argue it was a worthwhile signing in terms of being a role model. Again, you're much more tuned in with that than me. I'm not going to pretend 
Like I understand the locker room dynamics with Rose there, which was part mm-hmm. of the reason he was being brought in in fairness. But in terms of the on-court product, I can't because I watch the games. It just hasn't been there, right? But whether yeah. it's availability, whether it's consistency, it just has been a failure in terms of the on-the-court stuff. But again, that wasn't the whole reason that Derrick Rose was brought in. And then, of course, Zaire just needing reps. I think that – and this could be maybe a better topic down the road to Michael. Mm-hmm. Do you see Zaire Williams being traded – more than you see Derek Rose being waived because Derek has another year on that contract. He does. Not he mistaken. does. Yeah. And again, I think it's $3 million, something along those minimum. lines. Yeah. It's minimum. Yeah. Money. He's got the vet minimum. So on one hand, you know, Rose, if he's available, you can do worse with a third or fourth string point guard. Right. I think yeah. that's important to point out. You can do lots worse than that when it comes to Rose, but that's a roster spot. And with Lamar Stevens showing out and these two way guys that the Grizzlies might be interested in, Things are going to get tight. What do you envision them doing with these guys if they don't get any more sample size this season in terms of either of them playing? And again, that might be a a bigger macro conversation later, but just your, your gut instinct right now, you say that it's more important for Zaire to play. I agree with you, Mm -hmm. but moving forward, it's a heck of a lot easier to move on from Rose if they want to, because you got to find somebody that wants Zaire Williams. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're two completely different situations when you talk right. about it from that perspective. But here's the thing. Here's where I lay it out, Joe. This is how I kind of examine the two futures of those two guys. You basically look at it from the standpoint of what certain other players do on the roster will determine uh, the future of a Zaire Williams and the future of a Derrick Rose in Memphis. The player to watch in terms of the future for Derrick Rose is Scottie Pippen Jr., uh, he's been out a couple weeks now. He's going to be reevaluated here, uh, I believe, in the next week or so. And we'll see. You know, it, it, when again, he's going to be reevaluated. It doesn't mean he's going to return. Uh, I haven't seen him out there practicing yet or anything like that. He's still been in street clothes. But uh, we'll get an update there. And when he's reevaluated, if he's able to return in short order, and if he plays uh, like he was playing before uh, the injury, the, the back injury that, he, that he's been dealing with, I think you can make a case for giving Scottie Pippen Jr. a, a 14 or 15 man uh, roster spot with the the scoring ability that he's shown. And I mean, he he's he was impressive in in smaller stretches. Like you put more talent on the floor with him, you know, give him more minutes uh, with what the I guess the Grizzlies roster could look like last season. I think he could be a potential uh, piece that you could sign, you know, to a nice four year contract like they've done with you know Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams. And kind of build around who fits the timeline a little bit more than Derrick Rose. But you touched on something that's really important to point out with Derrick Rose. Uh, it's what, why I won't call the signing a, a quote unquote like a failure or anything like that on the court. It has been. You're right. I think uh, I looked at it, Joe. He hasn't played in more than five consecutive games at any point this season. That's a massive disappointment. There's no other way to describe that. It's a massive disappointment. And again, I'm not going to say I told you so because my concern was his production on the court. And at times he's shown flashes of what he's capable of. I didn't talk about the injury concerns as much. I know others did. Mm -hmm. And that has damned his season more than his actual play. Yeah. and But for me, it was more about the – the leadership and stuff, the, the the veteran stuff. I mean, we we saw. I mean, what this Grizzlies team like was last season. I mean, it was it was a fun team to cover and watch a lot of times. But there were a lot of you know uh, times where you knew, oh well, yep, this is definitely one of the younger teams in the NBA. There were a lot of moments that reminded you of that, and we haven't had as many of those type moments this season because of a Marcus Smart, because of a Derrick Rose. Talking to the guys in the locker room, they always talk about, man, Derrick Rose is has done wonders for me and things like that. And I don't think a lot of it is so just them kind of like clapping, you know, at Derrick Rose because of the fact that uh, it comes up unprovokingly a lot. You know, I, I just ask about leadership and things like that. And his name is just one of the first names that brought up. And he's pretty much brutally honest with them. Like I was talking about a situation uh, about a week or so ago with Gigi Jackson and, and him being a, more of a playmaker. And Derrick Rose basically said he, he goes to Gigi Jackson and he, he tells him like, uh, are you gonna you you gonna stop being scary dribbling the ball or what? Like he 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 he's gonna challenge him to be better, and you need those type of guys in the locker room, and that's kind of been his role. Now with Zaire Williams, I think Lamar Stevens is the key to watch. Uh, the way he's played, 
he's played better than Zaire Williams. Like, let's, let's just be honest. Now, we haven't seen him play a similar position as Zaire Williams, whereas Lamar Stevens has been playing more four and five with the Grizzlies. That probably wouldn't be the case. If he's kept around, he'd probably be more three and four. And uh, I think he, if he continues to show throughout the rest of the season, that makes Zaire expendable. You you mentioned that you have to find a partner, and that's the hard part right now because if Zaire Williams plays this last month, like through March and April, the way he played in February, February he averaged close to 13 points a game, shooting over 45% from the field. If he does that for February and March, I guarantee you there's some team out there that say, hey, look, you're not about to break an arm and a leg uh, from, from us for getting this player, but we take him for a protected second round pick or something like that. So uh, I think this hurts, uh, you know, figuratively for, for Zaire Williams a little bit more from the Grizzly side. Uh, the Derrick Rose situation will be a little bit easier to handle because either a Scottie Pippen Jr. will step up. Or and if he doesn't, I still think you just keep Rose on the back end of the roster because I mentioned the fact that he hasn't played more than five consecutive games at any point. Well, if you have John Morant, if you have Marcus Smart and, and those guys available, he won't have to play more than five consecutive games at any point next season. He, like much of the roster, has been outside of his ideal role because of the realities of this season health-wise. And that obviously has reared its ugly head again in the case of Rose and Williams. So hopefully – Things improve, maybe not this season, but it's a big offseason for everybody in Memphis, and it's those two are, are not immune to that by any stretch. And when we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, we're going to discuss a great piece that DeMichael, award-winning writer DeMichael Cole, has up for the commercial appeal there today in Memphis, Tennessee, taking a look at some lottery simulations, who Memphis might be in the mix for as a lottery pick team. We'll talk about all that next here on Locked On Grizzlies, but first, this episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Speed, power, style, whatever you're into, eBay Motors has you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one whip, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your car each and every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home a big win. Keep your ride or die whip alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to United States customers. We come back here on Locked On Grizzlies talking draft simulations. Fun times. Stick with us. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Molinax, joined by my co-host, Michael Cole, of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We talked Derek Rose and Zaire Williams injury updates earlier. We're going to move on to sunnier, happier times, right? Because as soon as this season's over, we can start thinking about next season. And We'll be honest, we've already started that process. DeMichael is not immune to that. He has a wonderful piece over the commercial appeal, and obviously you wrote it, DeMichael, so I'll let you summarize it. Uh, taking a look at draft simulations, who various mock drafts have Memphis taking. Again, it's hard to predict. The Grizzlies could jump up into the top four. They could fall back all the way to seven, eight, nine, something along those lines. All sorts of different outcomes, but you did some research and uh, have a little bit better of an idea where the Grizzlies may fall in the lottery. Yeah, you're going to have some fun things to say this segment, too. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing. But, but uh, yeah, to get into the story and the idea of it, you know, we, me and you have talked about these tank tankathon simulations a little bit. Uh, I know you're you're really into them. Uh, but what I did, Joe. March for a month or so. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I finally got on tankathon a little bit more and, uh, you know, just did about 20 or so simulations. And uh, out of 20 simulations, uh, the, the most – just looked at which draft spots uh, that the Grizzlies were projected to to kind of fall into and the players that would be available in that range. And what I gathered was that the seventh spot was the most prominent one. I think the Grizzlies right now at, at this current moment are projected to pick sixth. But the seventh spot, uh, if you through the 20 simulations, I think there were eight uh, of them that landed with the number seven pick. But I know there are more entertaining things that people want to hear. And the more entertaining things that people want to hear is – Two times out of the 20 simulations. So that's about 10%. But uh, on two of the simulations, the Grizzlies landed with the number one. 
overall pick. And I, I, I think we uh, have a good idea of who the who the Grizzlies would uh, pick in that situation. But so going a step further, I also looked at, you know, some of the other recent mock drafts out there. Like where are uh, the mocks kind of projecting the Grizzlies to draft right now? Uh, ESPN currently has the Grizzlies getting Jacoby Walter, which is a guard out of Baylor. A ble- guard slash forward out of Baylor. A Bleacher Report has uh, the Grizzlies getting Rob Dillingham, which is a guard out of Kentucky. The Athletic has Ron Holland, a G League Ignite forward uh, going to the Grizzlies. CBS uh, has Cody Williams, a freshman forward. The brother of Jalen Williams, a young star for Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, has him going uh, to the Grizzlies in the draft. And then the Ringer has Kevin McCullers, uh, the Kansas guard slash forward, of going to the Grizzlies. So what you notice out of that is all those players are perimeter oriented. And we spent a lot of time talking about the Grizzlies biggest need being center. And mm-hmm. what I will say is I like it. I I like it because of the fact that I've been very adamant about the idea of when you draft a center, you better know because the Suns drafted the center at the top a couple years ago. And I mean, well, more than a couple years ago, probably five, six years ago now, and DeAndre Ayton and Luca, Jaron Jackson Jr., Trey Young, all went behind him. Now, context Victor, matters there, though. DeAndre Ayton played at Arizona. There, there's some stuff there's, that connects there. I, I mean, yeah, but Luca also didn't he play with the the Suns' former coach, like in Slovenia at the time? Like there were some other connections. So I, I get it though. But but the point is. That center has to be a Victor Wimbanyama. I mean, not exactly him, but it has to be a prospect who you know from day one is going to come in and be uh, an impact player for me. And if you look at the draft, like the way this draft is shaping out, the reason that the Grizzlies in five notable mock drafts are projected to go with perimeter-oriented players because guard and four is super deep through the top 20 picks in this draft. You're only going to find four big men. Uh, pretty much in that group, uh, five in some mock drafts, in that top 20 range. And the Grizzlies, I'm just not a big fan of reaching in this. In in all those mock drafts, the Grizzlies are projected to pick sixth, seventh, or eighth. Only one big man is off the board when the Grizzlies are projected to pick in every mock draft that I've seen. I have not seen a mock draft that has a second big man off the board before the Grizzlies pick. But, Joe, I I know you still – you got some love for the big guys. Me personally, I like the idea of the Grizzlies basically are drafting too high to draft for need. You need to go for the best available. And if the Grizzlies stay in that six to eight range, as I mentioned, I did 20 simulations and they picked that number seven eight times. If they're picking that number seven, the best available is going to be a guard or a forward. And you draft that player unless you trade down. Yeah, I completely disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> completely um, disagree, Joe. Completely you don't disagree even agree a little bit. <laughs> like I, 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 I agree with the concept of drafting best player available. There we if, go. If that, if that is going to be the philosophy, though, for this particular draft, because as I've talked about before, there's an exception here for me. This year is the exception, right. and for somebody that loves Stephen Adams so much, you yeah. sure are interested in taking guys that don't help fill that void. Uh, Donovan Klingon fills that void. All right. I I want to stress that he and he has gotten leaner and he has gotten better. I've actually watched some tape of him. But you would draft him at seven? Seton Hall. I would absolutely draft him at seven. And the reason why is because some of the other names that are around that place, the, the names that you just listed off, Jacoby Walter does not help the Memphis Grizzlies right now. He doesn't do it. That's okay. True. He just doesn't. Rob Dillingham, I think he's a phenomenal talent. You want to bring in Rob Dillingham? I can sign off on that. Yeah. One of Luke Kennard or Marcus Smart has to go right now because oh. if, why would you have a guy that is your seventh overall pick be mm-hmm. your fifth guard on your roster? It doesn't make sense to me. So one of those dudes has got to go, and it's probably Kennard. And you guys already know where I stand on that philosophy. Uh, Kyle Filipowski has done really strong things at Duke. I'd be cool with him. The one big that you keep mentioning, if the Memphis Grizzlies do jump up to number one, Alexander Saar would be awesome, right? That solves the problem. He's becoming the number one, almost consensus. There's a couple of names that are still kind of floating around there. But Saar is coming closer to being that consensus uh, number one overall pick at seven foot one. And that would solve some issues. But again, I, I look at the size of some of these guys. Cody Williams, six foot eight, 185 pounds. 
185 pounds at <laughs> six foot eight. Like, what are we talking about? The Michael Jacoby Walter, six foot five, 180 pounds. He's almost as heavy as Williams, and he's several inches shorter. The teenagers, Joe. they are so. But again, are we trying to win a championship or not? <laughs> That is the question that I'm going to ask you between now and June. Every yeah. time we discuss this, are we yeah. trying to win a championship or not? I think Donovan Klingon puts you in that conversation. I'll back off my Zach mm -hmm. Eady take. That's me going a little bit overboard. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. acknowledge yeah. that you trade back to the twenties or something like that. That's yeah. when I'd take Zach Eady, but Donovan Klingon. Absolutely. I would take him at seven, 100%. Be at Philipowski, to be honest with you, I would take it seven. Because those are guys that fill an immediate need for a team that swears up and down their mm -hmm. championship contender. Are you yeah. trying to contend for a title or not? Are any of those wings and uh, combo yeah. forwards that you just mentioned going to start for this team in the fall? Yeah. It, so here's are they? My... I'm asking you a question. No, no, any no, of those no, names no, absolutely not. for you? Then They're not playing big about? minutes. Do you want to win a championship or not? This this is my this is my rebuttal to that though. I, I say that fact that. You're not trying to just build a championship team next season. You're trying to build a championship window here. Taylor Jenkins and, is trying to build a championship team next season. Oh, for because sure. Because if, if, if they don't, if they don't get out of the first round, I think he's fired. I think he's gone. <laughs> I think he's gone. I, I don't know how I you can think, make an argument for him moving. I don't think you're wrong at that point. And the thing is, I think you can do just that without this first round pick. You know, mm. being the rookie of the year or playing 25 or so minutes because you can go in free agency and get an impactful center, uh, someone who's going to rebound the ball really well because the starting lineup is pretty much set. So uh, you're building around that. Uh, the bench is decent. Like, I feel like you can get those wins. But I, the reason that I said guard, uh, because you make a strong point. Like, I, I completely agree with you. Like, I've been saying that every season needs to be championship or bust right now. But from a, 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 a controlled aggression standpoint, I think that you have to look at it from the standpoint of Luke Kennard is going to make over $14 million next season. And if he's playing on the court with John Morant, Desmond Bain, and those guys, his numbers are probably going to look really good, and you're probably not going to be able to re-sign him at his desired number. It would be easier to stomach losing Luke Kennard if you could just look over there and say, oh, yeah, we got Cody Williams ready to step right in. Or, oh, we got Rob Dillingham ready to jump right into the rotation on a cost-controlled contract for the next four to five seasons. That's how I'm looking at it. You're about to be a first apron team, potentially second apron at some point. Getting those cost-controlled contracts for more years would be an ideal situation while competing for championships. Especially for guys that are going to start for you as opposed to guys that are going to be coming off the bench. But DeMichael and I are going to continue to have this conversation. And then it's fun when we don't agree because we agree so often. Yeah, so let yeah. us know where you stand. And again, we're going to talk about this a ton. Hit us up in the comments. Are you on my side taking a big? Are you on uh, DeMichael's side saying best player available? Again, I, I, I'm i perfectly happy with Filipowski and Klingon. I would argue they are comparable to those wings. Uh, but we, that, there's lots of time for us to talk about that. When we come back next here on Lockdown Grizzlies, we are going to discuss Grizzlies in Philly against the 76ers. We'll talk about that next. But remember, we have lo uh, launched excuse me, here on Locked On, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel over on YouTube. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. This episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the chance to get something off our chest. Maybe you have a fee fi fo fum agenda like myself, or maybe you prefer bigs or wings or guards that can barely lift a bench or a, a, a dumbbell like DeMichael does apparently. Big or small, certain things can really get to us, right? It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. Obviously, sports are not that big of a deal when it comes to our mental health, but therapy can be different for everybody. While we may have larger concerns than our favorite sports team, it still can be helpful to get items off your chest, regardless the theoretical size, every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible, and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA.
When we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, we will talk Grizzlies. Sixers, stick with us. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Molinax, hanging out with my good buddy, the Michael Cole with the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. And before we talk Grizzlies in Philly, uh, and again, this can be short because, it, gosh, it just, it's just getting hard to watch these games. Even when they win, it's not easy to watch. Um, I do want to stress, I love the Michael Cole, right? And I am going to continue to have my hot takes that I always have. But when I get fired up, it's not at you, DeMichael. I know you know that. I don't want people to be awkward in the comments and, you know, try to go hashtag team Joe or hashtag team to Michael. Cause There's I know I'm going in between to Michael and Joe. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to lose that battle. And on some <laughs> random Monday, it's going to be to Michael Cole and Parker Fleming as the host of locked on Grizzlies, <laughs> as I joked about on the Tuesday episode. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all good. It's, you know, passionate to Michael. Obviously this is his, his, uh, his career, his life's work. I've been covering this team for over a decade. Passionate guys. We're going to get fired up every once in a while, but uh, that comes from a place of respect and all those sorts of things. Um, to Michael, speaking of that respect, the Grizzlies had better respect the Philadelphia 76ers because they're one of the better teams in the NBA. Yeah. In the Eastern Conference, I, I I think everybody would agree that the Boston Celtics are the standard, right? They seem like a clear oh, favorite oh, at this stage yeah. to go to the NBA Finals. They're just that much better than everybody else. The Bucs seem like a pretty clear number two. Uh, they've kind of righted the ship under Doc Rivers. The defense has really improved. A and then from there, it's kind of a jumble, right? You can make an argument for the Knicks when they're healthy. You can certainly make an argument for the Sixers when they're healthy. And while Memphis had a good showing in Brooklyn, if the Grizzlies don't maintain that energy and then some in Philly, it's not going to be a good result for, for Memphis, unless you want them to lose at this point, in which case it could be a good result. Yeah, I mean, that's all that's going to be the battle, you know, going forward at this point. What do you want the Grizzlies uh, to do? But uh, this game, you know, from a talent standpoint, you, the Grizzlies are going to probably be outmatched, overmatched against pretty much anybody uh, they play going forward uh, with all the guys they're down. I mean, they just they're just starting to lack players with NBA experience before this year, uh, let alone, you know, uh, in their careers, period. So it. Tyrese Maxey is in the concussion protocol right now. Uh, he did not play yesterday. And this is going to be the second night of a back-to-back. -back. So uh, there, there is some reason to believe that, if anything, the Grizzlies should uh, be very competitive uh, through, like they've been in most of these games. Of course, we've, we've called out the blowouts, you know, uh, against the Nets and, you know, and the Blazers, I think it was, and, and whatnot. Like, some of those games has, have stood out. But overall... Uh, I think that the Grizzlies have been very competitive from the standpoint of they go through three quarters, giving teams a lot of trouble. And then in the fourth quarter, when teams switch everything and you need isolation scores and you, talent pretty much takes over, uh, individual talent, that's when the Grizzlies kind of have struggled. I mean, before uh, that win, they had six consecutive fourth quarters of twenty uh, less than 20 points. So, uh, I mean, that is a big key going forward. But Tyrese Maxey, uh, it sounds like if he's in concussion protocol, I, I, it's going to be unlikely that he plays in this game. Uh, and if you're without Maxi, without Embiid, uh, from an offensive standpoint, they still will have guys probably like Tobias Harris. And again, second night of a back to back, so we'll see what happens to them. De'Anthony Melton, a friend of the Grizzlies as well, and you know there are some talented players over there. But uh, this is a game. This is one of the games you look at the, the rosters and you say, well, the Grizzlies shouldn't get blown out. They should at least uh, be very competitive for fourth quarters. In terms of health, right, this is one of those times, obviously Memphis still looking at a reality without their best players. That's important to understand. And I, I want to stress that when you are without both Maxi and Embiid, that is a, a major deal. But Jaron Jackson Jr. is questionable with that right quad tendonitis. So as I mentioned earlier in the week, it's likely that he makes his return tonight. Not 100%, right? Technically questionable is 50-50, but that's usually how Memphis has done it in the past. They're doubtful for a game, and then they ramp back up and get back in the mix. I am curious to see if Jaron does not play, how they attack the Sixers lineup with the weaknesses that they're going to have. Again, it gives off Blazers vibes with Embiid and Maxi, assuming Maxi's out. It gives off vibes of both of those guys being out that this is a game Memphis should compete, like you said. In theory, they could win because it's got it's a team dealing with absences of stars just like the Grizzlies 
are dealing with absences of stars. But it, as, as much of a cop-out as it feels like it is to say, a lot of this hangs for me on whether or not Jaron Jackson plays or not. If Jaron Jackson Jr. plays, I would pick Memphis to rock the upset in terms of that extra rest, second night of a back-to-back -back for Philly, like you alluded to, partner. Mm -hmm. I would pick Memphis to beat the 76ers because they're coming off of the good vibes of the Brooklyn game. For whatever reason, they're better on the road this season than they are at home. But if Jaron is out, I think it's difficult to pick the Grizzlies to beat anybody, especially a team like the 76ers, who, to your point, just have more guys that have more NBA experience logging minutes for them, even if the talent level is comparable. Yeah, and it's going to be a homecoming for Lamar Stevens, too. Philly NATO. Big uh, deal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those are those are always uh, circled on the calendar when you get to go back home and 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 play. Uh, so, you know, if, if Jaron is out, that means more him at the four or five. But I'll tell you what, it's maybe something we talk about a little bit more later. But you know how uh, we've kind of talked about it with other players like Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams, mm -hmm. how – uh, the rest of this season, kind of wanting to see them in their ideal roles, like when they're playing alongside of the Desmond Baines, Marcus Smart, John Morantz, et cetera. This four and five thing with Lamar Stevens is, yeah, whatever, because they need it right now. But I want to see him play the three a little bit more. I want to see – I mean, the four is cool too because he's going to be – he's a big physical guy. Like He's going to play the four regardless of who's on the floor. But I want to see him some at the three because, I mean, for all we know, that could be a completely different player. But we're, since we're starting to have this conversation about him potentially being on next season's roster, I think that's a big starting point in terms of can he play uh, the three in lineups where, you know, Vince Williams is at two, John Morant is at the one. Or can he be a capable uh, small forward in those type of lineups? Because right now you don't see him it, when he's playing this five role. He's not asked to shoot a lot of three pointers like it's it's. It's very rare that he's getting three-point uh, looks, but when he's playing the three, it's going to be completely different. He's not going to be setting as many screens. He's going to be on the perimeter more. And like I said, for all we know, that could be a completely different player. But it's hard for me to just make a concrete decision on saying, I want to keep Lamar Stevens or eh, I don't know if he fits the team without seeing that. To bring it full circle on the episode, you mentioned earlier in the show that for you, Lamar Stevens and Zaire Williams, their future – on the team is very intertwined. Exactly. And, and I think that's interesting. And Zaire better hope that Lamar Stevens can't play at the three because if Stevens is a four or five and Zaire, even though he's technically taller than Stevens, I believe yep. Zaire is very much a perimeter based player. We've talked about that before. You don't say Zaire Williams can play the four, right? No. Nobody really no. says that he's a two, he's a three. Uh, he's even asked to do some facilitation as a point guard type at times. Lamar Stevens, if he can play the three, I think Zaire Williams is all the more expendable. I don't know if you wave him, but I think your protected second idea just to open up a roster spot, I think that becomes much more likely if Stevens can play the three. So like you said, if Jaron plays, that allows for Lamar to maybe play on the perimeter a little bit more and we can see more of that. I agree with you 100% there. That's something to keep an eye on. Again, winning, losing. Again, maybe we can talk about that a little bit more later on in the week. I don't really care anymore. I just want to see, again, data accumulation, where they fit. I don't want them to tank because I don't think they're going to get to where they need to in terms of tanking. They're probably right in the sweet spot of where they're going to be. Anyway, go out, play the games, do the best you can, and let's see what these guys can do. That's where I'm at. We can talk more about that on our next episode of Locked on Grizzlies. The next time we're together is going to be our Thursday show. DeMichael Cole will be flying solo for that episode. DeMichael, I'm sure you'll talk Grizzlies Philly and all sorts of other fun things. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the, the main things that, that I want to talk about are particularly just the things that we just hit on. But Jaron plan or not is going to be uh, very important to me because that'll uh, probably tell us if Trey Jimison's going to be active or how, how much is he going to play, which will also lead into where Lamar Stevens uh, will play. Of course, it's always going to be uh, fun to talk about, uh, you know, Gigi Jackson and, and, and Vince Williams and those guys. But uh, Tyrese Maxey, again, doesn't sound likely that he'll play, but if he is available, uh, of course, that's another storyline to watch as well. So a lot to kind of take away from this game, you know, as we are getting to breaking it down on tomorrow's show. Looking forward to listening, watching, and hopefully you are as well. Amazon, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you keep checking out Locked On, or Locked on Grizzlies. And also make sure you keep checking out Locked On Sports Today, first ever 24-7 national streaming channel on YouTube. You can also check it out over on Amazon Fire TV under the free channels portion of that app. Again, for DeMichael Cole, I am Joe Molinax. Thank you, thank you, thank you a thousand times for making Lockdown Grizzlies a part 
of your NBA content consumption. For DeMichael, I'm Joe. Have a great Wednesday. DeMichael will catch you Thursday, and I'll catch you to close out the week with DeMichael here on Locked on Grizzlies. Have a good one.